I've worked with Horde Livestock for 12 years. Um, I've only been in the production industry for 17 years. I didn't even start till I was 30 years old. I had no animal background at all. I was brought into it kicking and screaming. And every time they taught me something new, it was like, I have to put my hand where? I have to cut this pig and do what? <laughs> so, and even at the time when I began, it was natural matings, and I had to help the boar do that. So, <laughs> it, it took quite a few years for me to get to where I am and to be comfortable with what I'm doing. I'll be presenting on high production with below average sow death loss. Um, like I said, I've worked for Horde Family Farms the last 12 years. Uh, where are we are located? We are about an hour north of the Ohio State University, and we're about an hour and a half southeast of Cleveland, where we have a couple really good ball teams and one that we're hoping will get better. So currently we have three 2,500 head sow barns that have not yet been converted to some type of pen gestation. One of these is a multiplier, the other two are commercial farms. Um, the state of Ohio requires that we must be converted by December 31st, 2025, post implantation, but our packers requiring us to be converted by December 31st, 2022. Our first 2,500 head pen gestation barn was built in 2008. We have small pens of 10 sows, and we saw the future of sow farms in Ohio moving towards pen gestation, and we wanted to learn how to manage pen gestation before we became required to do so. So in September 29, 2011, saw the Ohio law change, stating that any newly constructed barns are required to have pen gestation post-implantation. So this was our first attempt at pen gestation. Um, I actually managed this farm for five years. It is by far my favorite type of pen gestation that we have. In 2011, we built our first electronic sow feeding farm. Um, it's 2,500 head. In 2014, we doubled it to 5,000. And they have large pens um, for our system. They're pens of 82 couple pens of 65 and a few pens of 60 just to fit in the dimensions. Um, why did we go ESF? We wanted to attempt to lower the feed consumption in the pens to the same level as what we see in a crate. What we saw in the small pen barns was that our feed consumption was a little bit higher and as we know that is one of the largest inputs that we have is feed. Um, Something we need to take into consideration when deciding to go with ESF also is the cost of the system that you'll be using and the maintenance over the years. The system that we use with the small pens is very simple, just an auger. Um, but one thing that we have noticed with that small pens is where we do use more feed, we also get gain some of that cost back in a heavier cull sow. So each group that we have represented up here is 5,000 sows. Um, they're represented by a mature herd, and we all use the same processes throughout our entire system. The other thing to note is all the animals are PIC 1050, and they're created from our own multiplier herd. So any animal could be going straight from the finisher to the GDU, could go to any one of these farms. There, there's no differentiation. We don't breed certain animals only to send to ESF or only to send to a crated farm. They could go anywhere. So our crated farms, as we would guess, have a little bit lower average death loss, 5.78 over the two-year time period. The small pens were 6.99% and the ESFs were 8.87%. Um, and if we compare pigs per sow per year, crated farms are 29.97, the small pens are 30.29, and our ESF is a 29.17. So over this two-year period, there is a trend in the crates where the sow death loss goes up. It was an average, like I said, of 5.78% over that two-year time period. 
We ranged anywhere from 3.13% on the low side to 8.3% on the high side. And the small pens, um, again, were 6.99% over the two-year time period with a low of 3.63 and a high of 9.23, again, trending up over this two-year time period. And the ESFs, 5.95% was our lowest with a 12.13% being our highest, an average, again, of 8.87%. So as we look at them all together, they are all going up. The one thing to note is in the ESF, we're almost consistently higher. We start higher, we finish higher. So some of the observations, the cell mortality is in the ESF on our system is greater than what we see at a crated farm. Um, the animals get up more, they get up to eat, they get up when we walk the pens, they get up when we work the non-fed list. So there's a lot more opportunity for those animals to injure themselves or another animal. Some possible causes that we've seen, um, the lameness and how we treat the treatment efficiency. We've always been told in the crated farms that you hit them with Linko Index and they'll recover. So that doesn't work for an injury. We need to learn how to overcome that with new treatments. Um, and we also need to make sure we get that treatment a lot faster. Uh, a torn dew claw, get that covered somehow. And if, if it starts to fester and get larger, you need to get them pulled out of that pen, put into a crate where they have something that they can lean on to stand up and eat. And if the foot is, if the foot is treated properly and kept covered, then we can go ahead and rehabilitate her, get her to fair or litter, and put her on a coal truck. Another possible cause is prolapses. November of 2015 was when we first saw a noticeable increase in our prolapses and in our system. Um, I'm sure we've all heard about that for long enough. I don't need to talk about prolapses. <laughs> Um, and again, the diagnosis and treatments. Um, we have recently added an on-farm veterinarian, and we hope to retrain and refocus our efforts and, and reverse the trend of this climbing death loss that we've seen. So some solutions that we've seen at the slat level, ways that we can work through this. Um, check your feeder every day. Clean out any hard, wet, moldy feed. Um, so we can ensure good access to fresh food. This is the water working. Sow's not gonna eat if her water nipple's broken. And bloated sows, we've noticed that we've had some bloated sows, they eat and they drink a whole lot in the farrowing house when they're allowed free access. Um, and at times it can cause some bloating. If the sows are treated quickly, they will recover. And the crates, Make sure every animal gets up. During your daily walk behinds and your observations in the crates, make sure every animal's up. Check for lameness, front and back legs. Look for tapping of the feet. It's a sign of a possible infection at a treatable stage before other signs are showing. Are they cleaning up all their feed? Continue to check as you're doing your 21 day heat checks or as you're walking your barns before you run waters. Make sure that they've eaten all their feed. I mean, we don't overfeed sows in the gestation farm, so um, make sure they've cleaned it all up before you run your waters. If they're not cleaning it up, typically get them up. Even a sow that's not feeling well will get up and eat, but they will not clean it all up. So that is one of your first indications. Don't always walk the same when you're walking your rows and your pens. An example is row, walk row one through 16 one day and then turn around the next day and walk row 16 through one. You're gonna see different things at different stages of when they get up to eat. And pull from the crates and put them in a sick pen. Sometimes they need a little bit more room to move around. Put a mat in there, give them a little softer cushion if necessary. Look down, that's where your animals are. 
as you're walking through the barns, doing your daily walk behinds, you know, some people are just want, looking around, trying to see what else is going on. Is somebody watching me or not? But train them to look down, look at the animals, and take your time. There's nothing more important than your sow's welfare. And it saves a lot of time in the long run to take an extra 10 minutes to do your walk behinds. Solutions at the slat level in your pens. Touch every animal. When you walk during your daily observations, especially in the ESF farms where you have to get your animals up every day, as you walk past, if you just put a gentle hand on them as they're walking past you, you can feel that little catch sometimes in their gait, which will tip you off that there's something wrong before you can actually see it. Again, always look down. That's where your animals are. And pull quickly. Any animal that has a hard time getting up, as thin with a body condition score of two or less, is beat up or has a swollen foot, needs to come out of the ESF pens, the larger pens. It's just a danger to themselves and an opportunity for another animal to get hurt by her or she's laying in the way, trip over her. And again, take your time. Nothing more important than taking your time.